In the previous lesson, we found different relations to estimate the heat transfer due to convection for internal flows. However, in many real-world applications, the heat transfer coefficient is not known. Hence, we need to rely on expressions and correlations that let us estimate the Neustadt number, so that we can then calculate the heat transfer coefficient and predict the convective heat transfer in the system. For certain applications, we may find that the predicted heat transfer may not be sufficient. Hence, we need to use the signs that can enhance it. So, let's go and explore these topics. Let's start our analysis with laminar fully developed flows. Consider a steady incompressible flow with constant properties through a circular pipe with constant diameter. If we analyze an infinitesimal small control volume, we can assume that the heat conduction acts only in the radial direction and the thermal energy advection occurs only in the axial direction. We can write the thermal equilibrium in this form and then simplify it into this final relation. Under the assumption of constant surface heat flux, the equation can be reduced in this form. These terms in the expression form the inverse of the heat transfer coefficient. Hence, we can see that the Nussel number is constant. In the case of constant surface temperature, the equation leads to an expression that can only be solved numerically. However, the Nussel number for this case can be derived, and even in this case, it is a constant value. This means that for laminar fully developed flows, the heat transfer coefficient is independent on the Reynolds and the Prandt numbers. To estimate the Nussel number in the entrance region for laminar flows, we need to use some correlations since some of the assumptions we made before are not satisfied anymore. The axial heat transfer is not negligible and the advection acts also in the radial direction. In this case, we can have two different situations. One, the thermal entrance length problem, where the thermal profile is developing and the velocity profile is fully developed. Two, the combined entrance length problem, where both the profiles are developing. Here are the correlations that we could use for these two cases, for the validity ranges that are shown here. We can see how the Nussel number is now a function of Reynolds and Pram numbers. For turbulent flows, we need to rely on empirical correlations to estimate the Nussel number and obtain the heat transfer coefficient. Depending on the operating conditions, we can find several correlations. Here are some of the most commonly used ones. The first one here has two expressions, depending whether the fluid is heating or cooling. They are good for small temperature and properties variation. The different exponents are used to take into account the dependency of viscosity with temperature. Heating a fluid will reduce its viscosity near the wall, enhancing the heat transfer, while cooling it down increases the viscosity and causes a reduction of the heat transfer. When temperature and properties variation gets larger, this other correlation is more accurate. Lastly, this correlation can be used for a large range of Reynolds numbers, including transitional flows. 
In general, for turbulent flow, it is common to assume that the nozzle number in the entrance region is equal to the one in the fully developed region, since the entrance length is relatively short. But in the case of short tubes, it's better to use appropriate correlations instead. We analyzed how we can estimate the heat transfer through pipes, but can we enhance it? The answer is yes. There are multiple ways to do so. One way to accomplish this is by increasing the surface area where the fluid and the solid are in contact, using longitudinal fins or helical ribs, we can directly accomplish that. Another approach is to increase the flow turbulence by adding a coil spring wire inside the tube, so that the mixing can help transfer the heat. Also, swirling flows have a better heat transfer rate. Twisted tape can orient the flow, making it swirl so that a tangential velocity component is created, increasing the speed of the flow near the wall. Secondary flows can be very important to enhancing heat transfer. A simple way to generate them without using any insert is to coil the tube, so that the curvature will naturally generate secondary motion. A pair of counter-rotating vortices that forms greatly enhances the heat transfer rate. They reduce the entrance length and make the fluid temperature more uniform across a cross-section of the tube. For this reason, this design is commonly used for uh, chemical processes to produce pharmaceuticals or personal care products. All these heat transfer enhancements come at a cost. The pressure losses increase, so a more powerful fan or pump will be needed to drive the fluid. Also, designers must consider that inserts may break and the pieces could damage expensive machinery. Hence, only sturdy designs should be considered. This concludes our lesson on force convection correlations and enhancement in internal flows.